the island of Biscog. It was National Rodent Day, and Jenny decided to have a party. Hannah, Wooster, and Luis came. So did Bouncer and his buddies from the bowling alley. They all arrived, shaking after a narrow escape from the butcher's cat. Jenny decided to wheel in the dessert right away. Hot, hot marshmallow cheesecake with raspberry fudge sauce, she announced. Meanwhile, the cat had slipped in with the delivery boy. The mice just barely escaped to the basement. A German shepherd got granny last night, puffed Hannah. We should stay in our own holes. I'm tired of living in a hole, said Jenny. Let's fight for freedom, cried Bouncer. We'll be soldiers, rough riding rowdies. I'll be the general and commander in chief. Wait, cried Jenny. Let's sail away instead. We'll find a peaceful island. The mice cheered. I'll be the ship's captain, declared Bouncer. Rowdies, you're my crew. It took the mice most of the night to load the ship and roll it to the harbor. Ignoring the crowd at the pier, they sailed bravely out to the sea. During the first few days of the voyage, the mice feasted on chocolate waffles and coconut cherry cheese pie. Between meals, they dreamed of their island and tanned their pelts in the sun. As days passed, it grew colder and colder. The mice were unprepared for winter weather, and they huddled close to the waffle iron. Land ho! cried Captain Bouncer one morning as the ship narrowly missed hitting an iceberg. The mice looked at the compass and discovered that they had been sailing towards the North Pole. The compass must have been upside down, insisted Bouncer. I'm tired of being captain anyway. I quit. By the time they reached warmer seas, their food supplies were very low. The mice were seasick, homesick, and convinced they would soon be dead. I'd give a billion dollars for one last chocolate-coated cheese puff, moaned a rowdy. Suddenly, Jenny cried, land ho! The book called it the Island of the Skog, said Wooster. It says, population, one skog. But it doesn't say what a skog is. If there's only one, there's plenty of room for all of us, said Louise. Why don't we bring it a gift so it will know we're friendly? Wait a minute, wait a minute, Flubberhead, snapped Bouncer. Suppose this skog is dangerous. Let's blaze our way to the island and show him we mean business. The rowdies fired all 12 cannonballs and then the mice waded cautiously ashore. I claim this land, cried Bouncer, as a place where all mice can live without fear. We will build a great kingdom dedicated to the freedom of mice, and I will be the king. There were murmurs of surprise from the other mice. Here we can all feel like king, said Jenny, and that is the most important part of being king, as everyone knows. After unloading their supplies, they somersaulted on the beach through the long, brilliant sunset. How wonderful it was to be on land again. Finally, as the last rays of daylight faded, they climbed back aboard the ship to spend the night. At dawn, they discovered an enormous footprint in the sand. It looks like a bear track, said Hannah. Stand aside, tender feet, ordered Bouncer. This is a job for a rough riding rowdies. We'll use my grandpa's favorite trick. First, dig a deep hole, then cover it with straw and bait it with honey. Tonight, the beast will smell the bait, stumble into the trap, and the island will be ours. By evening, the trap was completed. The mice spent a sleepless night in a nearby hole. The next morning, they discovered that the trap was empty. Look, shrieked Hannah. Someone cut the rope. The ship is gone. We are marooned, wailed the mice. Our only chance now, said Bouncer, is to get rid of the skog before he gets rid of us. Who will volunteer? It looks like a job for the rough riding rowdies, said Jenny. Whose idea was to come here anyways, grumbled, 
grumbled Bouncer. All eyes turned back to Jenny. I have a plan, she said. We must build a giant kite and tie it to a very long rope. We'll circle a honey jar with one end of the rope, and when the skog steps into the circle, we will send a kite aloft. The skog will be pulled into the air and towed out to the sea. Do you see their plan there? That night, the mice hid behind a sand dune and kept watch over the honey jar. Just after dawn, a shadowy figure appeared on the beach. The monstrous creature lurched towards the honey jar. Trembling, the mice sent their kite high into the ocean wind. The plan had worked, but suddenly the skog came flapping apart, and half of him plunged back to the island. The fallen skog lay flat and still. Surrender, you pirate, puffed Bouncer. Suddenly, a little animal appeared. Don't hurt me, he cried. We won't hurt you, said Wooster. We were afraid of you. Why did you wear this monster costume? Because I was afraid of you, cried the skog. I was frightened by your cannons and your trap. What happened to our ship, demanded Bouncer. I cut the rope because I thought you were sleeping on board, confessed the skog. I've been so lonely here, but I decided it was better to be alone than to be afraid. If only we'd talk to each other, said Jenny. Bouncer stepped forward and helped the skog to his feet. They all agreed to build a village and live together. Let's make plans right now, suggested Bouncer. The first thing we'll need is a national anthem. Rowdies, you're the orchestra. The rest of you will be the chorus, and I will lead the music. Line up, everybody. Heroes, let your voices ring. To our island home we sing. Shelter us from stormy seas. Keep our kitchen stuffed with cheese. Save our pelts from lice and fleas. Save our pelts from, lice, from fleas and lice. Shout it once, shout it twice. Friends forever, skog and mice. The end. Thank you very much.